it's your girl Tara Crush back with another review and this time it is for Sisters on BET. If you haven't already, please hit my subscribe button down at the bottom. <laughs> Thank you so very much. And I want to get right into this review because a few things did happen. It wasn't quite paint drying, but it wasn't the best of the best episodes, but I'm not really mad at it. Okay, so we started out and we saw Fatima in the office with Robin. And we got a little bit to the bottom of where he was going with his line of questioning. And what this man came up with was basically, he knew that Fatima had went to see Gary. He didn't know if it was about what he was doing to Andy or if it was about him holding Zach's money. So he knows about Zach on, he knows a lot. And so, for me, I, I just really find Robin to be extremely suspicious at this point. Because how do you know all these things? How did you know to grab these pictures? How did you even know that there was an altercation? You didn't really explain that. Now, I understand that you have to do what you have to do to make your client look like less of a target on the list of suspects. But come on, man. Come on, man. No, I'm not buying it. And I did appreciate when he was like, well, I can just take all of this. I can take these photos and what I know and take it downtown, you know, so that the FBI can decide, you know, who needs to be questioned and whatnot. And she was just like, well, do what you got to do. And I was like, that's right, Fatima, because you ain't got nothing to have because you did not do that. He knows you didn't do it. He got your gun. He knows that you had a gun and he thinks that you're just going to come up with a knife. Nah, you reaching. You reaching, bro. You reaching hard. And so I'm glad that she did not. She caught his bluff. And he was just like, well, I'm not going to do that. But I do need you to play ball. Will you play ball? If I don't call the police, I would have been like, boy, do what you got to do. Because I need them to question me so they can get me off of their list. Because I didn't do anything wrong. Okay? And that's what I would have done if I was if I was Fatima. So she agreed to, um, you know, play ball with Hayden or whatever. He said he can't be, you know, cheerleading these two. What up, boy? Be quiet. Don't do not do that. Don't do that. But he gave her the rest of the day off and she left or whatever. You know, and I would have been in my feelings if I was Fatima because what are you doing with those pictures and what are you doing trying to frame me to look like a bigger suspect when you know I didn't do this? That's crazy. Which to me makes him look more and more like a suspect to me. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Okay, so then we have the agent is at Andy's apartment trying to figure out if she was the one that, you know, tried to take Gary out again. And we all know she didn't um, because there was somebody else that went in that in his room and, and put something in his IV. But the agent is planning like, oh, how convenient. You show up at the hospital and then all of a sudden he starts convulsing with this you know, somebody injected something in his IV, which, you know, it seemed convenient when do let her in the room in the first place because he made all that fuss just to let her in. He's like, no, you know what? It's perfect that you come through. So it still makes me think Hudson might have something to do with the stabbing. I don't know, but he's definitely not off the list for me. Not at all. You know, the way the agent is always trying to play against their characters, like he's always attacking like, I wonder who's writing for him. Who's writing for these people that keep attacking these girls' character? Because it's trifling. It's like, it's it's trifling. It's like, it, it, it really puts on the line how, how Tyler has allowed these characters, how far left he's allowed these characters to go. Like, seriously. Karen's pregnant by two different men at the same time. You see how quickly he turned her character into some ghetto hood story salon owner now come on man it, it, it it's it's sad how he does these characters you got sabrina at a dong on sperm bank really sabrina at a sperm bank gotta do that sperm bank that's where he got these characters right now he got danny you know smoking weed any and every day dealing with somebody that doesn't have any type of emotional intelligence doesn't see her at all you know, but she's fighting to stay with him. He has no accountability at all. No boundaries with his ex at all. Doesn't discipline his children at all. Blames her when they do bad every time. Talks at her every time they have a disagreement. I don't know what y'all see in Tony. Tony is not a good man. 
and y'all seeing so much in him lets me know that y'all not really y'all ain't never really had a good man before i ain't saying he's not a man that he is a man and a lot of y'all ain't never had a man <laughs> much less a good one <laughs> and it shows that the way that y'all you know y'all put these men on the pedestal your man's not supposed to talk at you when there's a disagreement. He's supposed to listen to what you have to say. You're supposed to listen to him. Y'all supposed to come upon some type of agreement or compromise or something. Or it might even be his word as the final word in your relationship, but he still needs to listen to what you have to say. I don't know. Tony doesn't do any of that. Tony talks at Danny. Tony makes decisions for Danny and then get, tells Danny that she needs, you know, I figured you would want to No, what would make you think I would want to. I didn't do anything to make you think I would want to. So clearly this is something you want me to do and that I ain't feeling. You know, Danny said it today. You know, she's sick of men trying to change her to what they want her to be. And and exactly, stand on yours. And y'all say that, you know, I've been in these groups and they say Danny's not ready for a relationship. Danny's ready for a relationship. Danny just keeps choosing the wrong men. Danny keeps choosing men that are good for her body, but not good for her soul. If you can get Danny off, then Danny's going to want to be around you all the time. And that's just not good enough. We have to do better, ladies. Danny, you have to do better. Are you going to keep having these men that just keep missing the mark? Then we have Pam and Karen at the shop. Karen's mom shows up. And, you know, she's trying to figure out who Miss Marie is. And they tell her she's the new bankroll for the uh, situation. And she's not really impressed. You know, she's more so worried about the stress that Karen is going through. And I'm just trying to figure out, like, why would they just let that girl leave like that? Like, I would have had to get her information. And I probably would have had to sue her for defamation of character and for slander. Because she definitely tried to run a scam. And it's it's just weird to me that they just letting that go. I don't I don't understand why they're letting that go. But that's their business, I guess. They didn't write the script. They just have to act. <laughs> they just have to act it out. I'm asking the writers, why y'all letting that go? Because that was like three episodes that we had to hear that stupid roots to riches. We had to hear that stupid chant. And I don't understand why y'all would do that. Just for her to be scamming. And then we see um, we see Gary's doctor and Hudson, and they're speaking. And Gary's doctor was basically letting him know that whoever was that injected something in Gary's IV didn't want him to wake up because they injected him with heroin and a dangerous strand of fentanyl. And, you know, in true Tyler Perry fashion, I'm going to tell y'all what happens at the end, as if y'all didn't see it. I just, I came with these, like, I don't know who's writing this stuff. And I don't know if they understand what it is that they're writing. But if somebody gets injected, that somebody that has never, ever, ever done heroin or fentanyl gets injected with it, They supposed to die in real life. <laughs> like, I don't know who's writing this stuff, but they just writing whatever it is that they want to write. They writing words that they've heard on TV, but they don't know what those words mean because they should not have said fentanyl because that you can have, you know, five picograms of fentanyl and it'll be enough to kill you if you ain't, if you don't have a tolerance to it, you know, so it doesn't make any sense, but whatever, whatever. Speaking of Danny and Tony, we did see them um, going back and forth. And, you know, Danny was standing her ground. Tony was, you know, me and Tony. I really don't even care to report on them. But um, they made up nonetheless. Um, and I'm moving I'm moving right along away from them because, again, boring. Um, we saw Fatima and Zach. Zach's excited because Michael said his first word, which was nuggets. And, you know, that's exciting um, when your child that is speech delayed does begin to speak. I definitely get that. Um, 
Fatima didn't want to tell him what happened at work. She didn't want to tell him that Robin was trying to insinuate that her and the him had actually stabbed Gary because she knows that they didn't do it. But, you know, she said she would talk to him about it later. Which, she kills me with that. She needs to tell, that's her fiance. She needs to let him know everything all the time. Like, I don't understand that. Like, even if you're my boyfriend, you're going to know what's going on with me. I'm not keeping nothing from you. I don't understand Fatima in the way she operates in this relationship at all. So, back to Andy and the agent. They are at her apartment, and he's basically questioning her about Gary. And, it, you know, all of a sudden, he gets up, and he just snatches her up like he's about to kidnap her, make her go down to the station and talk about you know, what happened with Gary. And as she's trying to struggle away from him, who's on the elevator? Da -da -da -da! Robin. Not Batman, but Robin. <laughs> Robin's like, hands up off my client. <laughs> Raise up, boo. Yeah, so Robin was not having it. He told him he was going to have Deuce's badge. If he kept on, he was going to get a restraining order on him because he ain't can't just keep coming up snatching up his client like that and that's true and i mean for andy to be a doggone attorney she she sure ain't that smart and she allows her you know her rights to get violated all the time and i would never understand that andy i just don't understand it writers i don't understand why y'all keep letting andy have her rights violated and she's the lawyer and she ain't sued nobody whatever whatever okay um so, Robin is there with Andy, and they're having a conversation, and he kisses her, and she allows it, and, you know, they have a conversation afterwards, and he's basically like, you know, so, I'm so sorry, as your attorney, I should have never done that, and as your boss, blah, 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 and she's like, look, I knew the kiss was coming, I knew what it was, and I wanted it. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. But we're friends. <laughs> he was like, oh, you threw me in a friend zone. And she basically said, you know, even though Penelope, Jordan's sister, has poisoned him against me, I cannot betray him like that by dealing with you. But you know our chemistry is palpable. You know what we got is real. Blah, blah, blah. But I can't do this because I can't do this to Jordan. And then Robin said something that was very, 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 very telling to me. Because I don't know where it came from. If y'all can tell me, I would I would greatly appreciate it. But he said, you wouldn't be the Andrea Barnes that I fell in love with if you could betray Jordan. When did he fall in love with Andy? Ain't he missed to turn her out? Ain't he missed to make her have a threesome? Ain't, ain't that him? When did he fall in love with her? Because then they was getting ready to take the law firm from him. He he found his way out of that, I think, through one of her contacts. And then he flew on back to, to, New it, to London. When did he fall in love with her? They just be writing anything down, don't they? But that puts a twist on it because if you're in love with her, then you really feel slighted that Gary tried to come for your law firm and he came for the woman that you love. Is that what I'm hearing, Robin? I mean, you can tell me. You can tell me. I'm. You can tell me because I'm not going to tell nobody. So let me know. Holler at me, Robin. What's up? Because that's what it's looking like to me. That's what it's given. It's given that you may have actually come to try to kill Gary because Gary was ruining your life. And, and what gets me is he tells her this and she don't even react to it. She don't even react to the fact that he said that he fell in love with her. When did you know that Robin loved you, uh, Andy? Why are you acting like that don't mean nothing? And then you call all the girls over, and I'm thinking it's because you want to tell them about the agent and how the agent's trying to frame you. No, you don't give a dong on about that agent. You know what you care about? Robin kissed me. Yeah, he, he kissed me. Girl, he also said he fell in love with you. 
Why you didn't bring that up? Why wasn't that important to you, Andy? That was the most important thing that happened on the entire episode as far as I'm concerned. Because Robin is not supposed to be in love with no dango Andy. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. But I just, I definitely don't understand why she would call all of them together just to tell them that Robin kissed her and act like a schoolgirl. Girl, straighten up. Because if, you, if you're if you not going to explore it because of Jordan, then why are you getting so giddy about it right now? Make that make sense. This makes none to me. Like, if y'all can explain to me Andy's character, she's supposed to be the attorney, but she's a ditzy dummy in the entire situation. And she sent Robin on his way and, you know, called the girls over or whatever. And they had their meeting. And while they're having their meeting, apparently, Gary wakes up. Milk dud head ass Gary is awake. And, you know, Hudson decides to call Andy and, you know, puts Gary on the phone. And Gary wants to know where is Andy. And then it goes off. That's the cliffhanger. Uh, weak cliffhanger because again he's supposed to be dead if he got fentanyl and heroin why is he alive make it make sense was was he on fentanyl and heroin we already knew he was on that booger sugar we already knew that because we saw him doing lines before and a couple of seasons before so we already knew he's not he's not a stranger to street drugs right but heroin fentanyl make it make sense i don't understand I don't understand, but he's alive and he's awake now. So now we get to deal with his dialogue again. I'm so excited, aren't you? I really am. But I'm going to end the review right there because that's about where the episode ended. And it wasn't a whole lot. And I don't want to drag the, the review on at all. So if you haven't already, please hit my subscribe button down at the bottom. Thank you so very much. And I want to wish everybody watching this video a happy turkey day tomorrow. I hope you get all the food, all the eats that you want to eat. And you eat it two or three times. Like, I want everybody to gain two or three pounds. Gain a few pounds this holiday season. Why not? You only live once. And food is, is really one of, like, two or three things that we get in this world that we can enjoy that is just to enjoy. We definitely have to have food, but we don't. it don't have to taste that good. It don't have to taste that good. Am I tripping? I love food. Mm. So definitely enjoy your turkey days and definitely enjoy your family. And make sure you let them know that you're thankful for them because that's what it's supposed to be all about. All right? And if you are not the type that likes to subscribe to channels because you don't like those notifications, I get it. But you made it to the end of this video. And that's more than I can say for a lot of people. So I still mess with you too. So thank you. And that is my $5 and two cents. Peace.